Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today. Welcome to another Dev Diary for Prehistoric Kingdom. In today's Dev Diary, it's obviously for August. We're going to be seeing what the dev team is up to and what new updates are coming our way. I know I'm a little late. This is a few days after the fact and I literally am just sitting down to look at this for the first time right now. So you and I will go through it together for the first time and be surprised hopefully and pleased hopefully so let's go ahead and jump into it uh and see what they have for us welcome to august's development update in this month's post we'll be sharing some upcoming developments and briefly discussing new features the team have been working on where we're at, currently the team is working on two updates, the big 1.1 title update, as well as a smaller patch that'll be releasing sooner. This next update includes two main things, animal signs and steam achievements. Very cool. So it looks like we have a little preview of the signs right here. Little education boards, very cool. Um, adding a little bit of education to your parks is always great. Animal info signs, the top left. Display an image of the animal, their time period, and the discovered location. Players can pick from a list of nearby species. So very similar to obviously Planet Zoo is gonna be the one that is closest you're gonna place this as like a little billboard item and then be able to select the animal that this is uh, outside their enclosure and let your guests know what is going on inside the enclosure but I also love these ones right here the do not tap on glass it scares the theropods no flash photography do not feed the animals uh, especially these do not uh, feed your fingers to the animals very important uh, and no climbing on fences or you'll get swallowed whole by a, a T-Rex. <laughs> I love that. A little bit of character in your parks. What's in the pipeline? As the next update gets closer, some of the team have already begun work on future species and new gameplay mechanics. Future species always makes me excited. We've settled on what we think is going to be a very satisfying research system that you'll hear more about in a later blog post. Very cool. Animal locomotion. This, I think, is the meat and potatoes of this devlog specifically, so let's go ahead and jump in. At the heart of, uh, oh, let me start that one over. At the heart of animal AI is their locomotion. How they move is the foundation for what they can do. The more flexible their animation and movement systems are, the more behaviors we can add onto them. We've been making a lot of changes in the service of dynamic hunting, combat, and ensuring that animals can get into position, i.e. drinking spots, eating, and social animations, as seamlessly as possible. No stop, start, no awkward idle turn. That was a weird sentence for me, I'm not sure why. No stop, start, no awkward idle turn. That's, I mean, that's great. They're trying to make it seamless as possible, as they said, so that you're really not gonna hopefully be able to tell when a specific animation is starting and when an animal is transitioning to a different animation. Uh, it'll seem a little more lifelike, hopefully. So that's very exciting that they are paying attention to those tiny little details. Though we're still experimenting, <laughs> My goodness, though we're still experimenting, we thought we'd show off what we've been doing. Please note that all examples below do not include foot IKs, so there'll be some sliding. Okay, so it sounds like they're not completed yet. So, uh, oh, here's a GIF. To start, animal movement speeds are now more progressive. Originally slowing down, speeding up, and shifting into a run makes animals far more responsive and lively. For animals that switch between quadruped and biped, they'll still need a transition for it. Very cool. So we see our iconic T-Rex here going from a walk, speeding up into a, what I imagine would be kind of a slower jog or maybe an all out run for a T-Rex. I don't really know how fast they were, um, but very cool. So transitions between the two and you can see it slows down there back to like a halt. So it's got some different gates that it goes through. Very cool. When walking, animals can move in eight different directions. My goodness, eight different directions. This allows us to easily reposition creatures by simply asking them to walk forwards, 
uh, strife or backwards. <laughs> Obviously, this can introduce sliding, so we'll try to resolve it uh, with IKs the best we can. IKs, I'm not familiar with that, but maybe you guys are. Here we have our little T-Rex doing a little side shuffle, stepping side to side. Very cool. Awesome, awesome little animation. As you see below, we have dynamic momentum on the head, body, and tail, depending on how fast the animal's walking forwards or backwards. We found that adding these little touches helps to make the animal feel more grounded, especially since they're reactive. Perfect, here's another one. That's, I should have scrolled down before reading that, but there you go. He's just kind of moving around. Um, let's see, he does a little sidestep, then backstep and then kind of goes forward into a run. So you can see there that the feet do kind of slide around just a little bit. Um, the toes kind of clip into the ground, but as they've said, they're, they're working on that. Um, but I really like the movement in the, in the head, the body, and then in the tail. It really does look like all the muscles are moving, especially if you watch just as this thing takes this right step, left step. Look at the left leg muscle wiggle. I love... <laughs> I was just about to say, I love a good muscle wiggle. That doesn't sound right. I love the little details that they are paying attention to with these animals in their animations. And yes, it is going to make them feel uh, much more alive and like they're real. These are just some of the changes we're making to core locomotion. There are a few more experimental but very cool things we've left out of today's blog post, so keep an eye out. As a team, we're incredibly, nope, we're extremely happy with the direction of things, uh, with the direction things are heading. And once we've locked down our final pipeline, we will do a full showcase of everything the animals can do. Once animal locomotion is 100% sorted, we can start working it towards hunting and combat. I cannot wait. What I really want to see is both combat animations, um, so predator prey or just, uh, well, that would be hunting, or uh, you know, T-Rex fighting T-Rex or something like that, or T-Rex fighting anything else. I really want to see um, interspecies uh, animations, so different species working with one another or interacting with one another is the correct word. Um, so I'm really excited to see that. Guest AI. Work on improving guests has continued well since last month. As part of our efforts to enhance the simulation, we've made good headway into obstacle avoidance so that guests try to avoid each other. It's yet to be integrated onto our actual guests, but our simulations have performed well. Our solution is pretty dang fast and has given great results thus far. Any blue sphere below is an agent that has successfully avoided collision. A fun side effect is that much like real life, your park may suffer a traffic jam if guests can't disperse. Very cool, making guests seem a little bit more lifelike, making them so they don't walk into or through one another is always a good thing. Our programmer who has been tasked with taking on crowds, Seth, also made heat maps for us to use. Here's a rudimentary look at a heat map displaying guest density. Oh my goodness. That's very cool. This path is like jam packed with guests, but that's really cool. So you'll be able to see where the traffic jams are uh, very easily and then hopefully rectify those by either adding a bigger path or more path. Uh, very cool. Streams. We know you've all missed our adorable faces. We have. So we'll be making our uh, streaming comeback after our short hiatus away for the summer break. For the month of September, we'll be hosting weekly live streams on Twitch and YouTube. Very cool, weekly, that's awesome. Members of the team will be building a prehistoric park together, discussing the game, chatting about future updates, and from time to time, even sharing sneak peeks on what we're working on. So don't miss out on those streams. Sounds like you could, uh, get some very early information on what is going on. Finally, check out our most recent Let's Build starring the cherished, cherished <laughs> Camarasaurus. Awesome, I think that's it. Yeah, then we move into the community spotlight. I love this screenshot, it's so cool. Warpath always makes very, very cool things. 
Uh, but yeah, a little community showcase there. And thank you for reading August's Dev Diary. So if you want to take a look at this, uh, read it again, or just look at any of the screenshots a little bit closer or longer, I'm going to go back up so that we can see our T-Rex running uh, on this beautiful little gif. You can find this either on their Twitter or on Discord. Um, link to my Discord is down below, and it is posted there as well if you want to read further. But that is it for August. Unfortunately, I haven't had a whole lot of time to play Prehistoric Kingdom as of recently, but I am still just as excited about new things coming to the game, and I cannot wait to see how they continue to develop things, and the updates coming sound pretty exciting. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you are excited. You are able to purchase Prehistoric Kingdom for yourself on Steam, so if you're interested in picking it up, you are more than capable of doing so. So right now, get your hands on it, get in there, get building, see how it feels. Uh, I'm very much enjoying it so far. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do apologize that I am a little late. I've been working in over 100 degree weather for eight hours a day uh, for the last four days. And when I get home, my brain is a little bit fried to say the least. So I just didn't have it in me to record a video yesterday or the day before, or I guess the day before that, because this is a few days out late. Um, but if you're watching now, thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I will talk at you guys in the next video. Bye!